Implementing the Saga pattern with mass transit has been a highly requested topic on my channel, so I decided to make a video about it. I'm going to show you how to build a state machine Saga with mass transit, and we're going to use Postgres as our Saga repository. This is our initial setup, and I already prepared the baseline configuration of mass transit. We're calling the add mass transit method to configure the required services. I'm setting the endpoint name formatter, registering the consumers from the current assembly, and I'm connecting mass transit to use RabbitMQ as the message transport. I also have an EF core database context configured that we're going to use as the Saga repository, and we have some commands and respective events that we're going to be publishing with mass transit. We have the command to subscribe to a newsletter, to send a welcome email, and to send a follow-up email. And we also have a set of events, the subscriber created, welcome email sent, follow-up email sent, and the onboarding completed events. So we're going to start by implementing some handlers for the commands that I have here, and the consumers of these commands are going to represent the steps for our saga. A saga is a way for you to implement a long-lasting transaction in a distributed system. Instead of implementing the two-phase commit and waiting for all of your steps to complete, which can be error-prone, you're going to implement what's called a saga. And one way how you can look at a saga is that it consists of small, short-lived transactions. For example, the handler to the subscribe to newsletter message could be one step in our saga. Inside of this handler, I'm going to inject our database context. And then in the consume method, I'm just going to create a new subscriber and add it to the database. So I'm going to add the code for that. We're creating a new subscriber entity. I'm setting the email of this subscriber to be the value that we get on the subscribe to newsletter message. I'm also assigning an ID and I'm accepting a value back from the add method, which is actually an entity entry object. Then we're going to persist the changes in the database by calling database context, save changes async, and then I'm going to use my consume context, which I have access to from mass transit, to call the publish method, and we're going to publish the subscriber created message. So let's set the properties on this message. So I'm going to set the subscriber ID from the subscriber entry, and I'm going to access the entity and then the ID value. And for the email, I can use the same approach, or I can get this value from my original message. So this is one handler for the subscribe to newsletter message. I'm going to add a handler for the send welcome email message, and this is what the handler will look like. We're implementing the iConsumer interface for the send welcome email message. I'm injecting an email service, which I'm going to use to execute the business logic. And this is going to be just sending a welcome email to the new subscriber. After we complete this step, we're going to publish another event, which is going to be the welcome email sent event. Then I'm going to add another handler, which is going to be the follow-up email handler. So this is going to be a consumer for the send follow-up email command, and it's going to follow the same design as the welcome email handler, except it's going to send a different email to the subscriber. After it sends the email, it's going to publish a different event. This time it will be the follow-up email sent event. Now notice that I'm also setting the subscriber ID when I'm publishing this event, and I'm doing the same in the welcome email handler. The subscriber ID value comes from the message that's available on my command object, and you will see why this is important when we start implementing our saga, but I'm going to give you a little hint. We need a way to correlate different messages to the same saga instance. Lastly, I'm going to add a handler for the onboarding completed event, and it's just going to use a logger to write an information log and return a completed task. So now let's go ahead and implement our saga, and let me define a folder that's going to contain the classes. So I'm going to start by adding the newsletter onboarding saga data. There are two types of sagas with mass transit. One is a consumer-based saga where you're just going to be publishing events, and the other is a state machine saga which implements the orchestrated saga pattern. So we're going to be implementing a state machine saga, and I first have to define the data for my long-living saga by implementing the saga state machine instance. What we have to define here is a correlation ID. So I'm going to just assign it a get and a set value, and mass transit is going to set the correct value for this property. And I'm also going to add a string property, which is going to represent my current state. This is going to allow me to track what is the state that this saga is currently in when I store it in the database. Then I'm going to add some supporting properties to the saga data class. And these are going to be the subscriber ID value so that we know who is the current subscriber that we are onboarding into the newsletter. 
then we've got the email so that we know where do we want to send these emails and then I have a few boolean flags that are going to represent what state I'm currently in. You can also determine the state of the saga based on the current state properties but having the individual flags could be helpful if you want to manage some complex conditions such as what should happen when the welcome email is sent, the onboarding completed is set to true but we didn't send the follow-up email if that can happen in your flow. So once we have our saga data it's time to add the actual Saga implementation. So I'm going to add a newsletter onboarding Saga and we are going to implement the mass transit state machine interface and I'm going to specify my Saga data object as the generic argument. Now I need to define what are going to be the states for my Saga and I'm going to define three states the welcoming state, the following up state and the onboarding state and you will notice that the states of our state machine match the events that we have defined in the system. I'm also going to define some events inside of the saga which are going to represent which events we want to be listening to and reacting to inside of the saga. The state and the event types are just interfaces from mass transit and they are going to help us define the transitions of our state machine from one state to the other based on the incoming events. And the events that we are reacting to are the subscriber created event, the welcome email sent event and the follow-up email sent event which are all published by the consumers that we just implemented. And now we come to the most interesting part which is actually defining our saga and the individual steps. I'm going to start by setting the instance state to be the current state property which is going to serialize the state value as a string inside of our database and that will make it easier for us to track what is the current state of the saga. Then I'm going to configure the three events that we have here with our saga instance by calling the event method and then we have to specify a factory to provide the event instance and we're doing this to be able to define how to correlate the incoming events to the current saga and we are using the subscriber ID property as the correlation ID. And now that we configured all of the components required for our saga it's time to implement the state transitions and we're going to start from the initial state. So we're going to call the initially method and then we can define the individual activities. I'm going to use the when method to define what should happen in the initially state when we get the subscriber created event. Now I can chain a call what should happen when we receive this event in the initial state. What I'm going to do is to access the behavior context to set some values on my saga. I'm going to set the subscriber ID to the incoming value of the message which is my subscriber created message and let's for example set the subscriber ID and the email values. So I'm going to assign these properties and then I can continue chaining other methods to describe what should happen. So let's say I want to transition our state machine from the initial state into the welcoming state. I'm going to call the transition to method and specify our state. I can also publish some event after I've completed my transition so let's go ahead and publish the command that's going to execute the next step in our saga which is going to be the send welcome email command. I can use the message that I still have access to, the subscriber created message, to pass in the subscriber ID and the email values. And this is how you can define one step inside of your larger saga. From here, I can continue adding the next steps inside of my saga. So now I'm no longer in the initial state, so I have to say which state I'm currently in. We do that by calling the during method and now I can specify some other states. So I can say during the welcoming state and then define what are the activities that I want to happen. So for example, when the welcome email sent event occurs, then I want to do something and that something is going to be updating my saga. So let's go ahead and access the saga instance and I'm going to set the welcome email sent property to true. Then for example, I'm going to transition my saga into the following up state and I can of course publish another message. So let's say I publish a new send follow-up email message and I'm going to use the message itself to access the subscriber ID and the email properties. This defines how we transition from the welcoming state into the following up state. And let's define one more transition. So during the following up state, when we receive the follow-up email sent event, then we are going to update our saga so let's access the saga data and I'm going to set the follow-up email sent property to true. 
I'm also going to set the onboarding completed property to true and then I can transition my saga to a different state. For example, I could transition it into the onboarding state. After this, I may want to publish my message. So let's say I publish the onboarding completed event and I'm going to assign it the subscriber ID values. So let me access that from the message and I'm also going to set the email. However, this also marks the end of our saga. So how you complete the saga is by calling the finalize method. And this will transition the saga to the final state. Now we have to configure the saga with mass transit. So if I go back to the program file, this is where I can configure my saga. I'm going to call bus configurator and I'll call the add saga state machine method. And I can specify my saga instance and the respective saga data object. I mentioned that I also want to be able to persist my saga in the database instead of having it persisted in memory by default. So for that, we need to install another NuGet package. I'm going to look for mass transit and I want to install the mass transit and the framework core library. I'm going to install the latest version. And what this allows me to do is to introduce a repository for my saga. So I'm going to say NED framework repository and I'm going to configure this repository to use an existing database context and I'll specify my AppDB context that I already configured with EF Core. I'm also going to tell it to use Postgres because I'm using the Postgres database under the hood and this method is required for your repository to work correctly. The next thing I need to do is to configure the actual Saga data object with my EF Core database context. So if I go to the database context, I'll need to add the Saga data class as a database set. I will also need to configure my entity to at least set the primary key. So I'm going to call the onModelCreating method and from the model builder, I can call the entity method specify my saga data type and I can say that this type has a key and the key value will be the correlation ID. So it's important to use the primary key of the table as a correlation ID and it's also helpful for performance if this is a clustered index. And the last bit of configuration we need is to be able to support publishing of these messages after we have persisted the state transition in the database. This is going to be important to allow us to properly transition from one state to the other inside of our state machine saga. So how we do this is by calling the use in memory outbox when we configure our RabbitMQ connection. And with this setup in place, let's call the post endpoint that I have configured here to test out our saga. What the endpoint is going to do is to inject an iBus instance and use it to publish a subscribe to newsletter command, which kicks off our saga. So if you remember, the saga starts when we receive the subscriber created event, and this is published when we handle the subscribe to newsletter command. I'm going to generate the database migrations in the background, and they're going to run when I start the application. So now let's take our state machine saga implementation for a spin. I'm going to send a post request to our API and subscribe to the newsletter. So if I hit execute, I'm going to land on this breakpoint in my minimal API endpoint, and I'm going to publish this message message which is going to kick off my saga. So I'm going to press continue and you will see that I immediately land in the subscribe to newsletter handler. So here I'm going to add my subscriber to the database and after completing save changes we manage to store this in the database and we get back a subscriber ID. So we're going to use this to publish the subscriber created method which is going to begin our saga. So if I press continue, we're going to land in the send welcome email handler. But if I go over to the database for a moment and I show you the saga data table, you will see that I have one record here which matches our saga. Notice that the correlation ID value and the subscriber ID value are the same. And if I open up the subscribers table, you will see the same ID again. So this is the one that we set in our initial handler and the correlation ID was automatically set by mass transit. Also notice that the current state is welcoming. This is because we handled our initial event and transitioned to the welcoming state. So now we are handling the send welcome email event. So I'm going to execute the service method and publish the welcome email sent event. This is going to land us in the send follow up email handler. And if I refresh the state in the database, you will see that the current state is now following up. Also notice that the welcome email send column now has a value of true. If I press continue again, we're going to land in the onboarding completed handler, which is the last step in our saga. And if we take a look at the state in the database, 
I'm going to refresh this now, you will see that the saga has transitioned to the final state and all of the columns have the assigned values. And the only thing that remains is to execute our onboarding completed handler. So this is how you can implement a state machine saga with mass transit. Depending on the complexity of your saga or your long-lived transactions, you may have many more states and many more state transitions in your saga definition, but the overall idea remains the same. You will have a specific state in your saga, such as the welcoming or the following up state, and you're going to define what happens when you receive particular events while in that state. You can decide to transition into a new state, send a compensating transaction, or even fail the saga completely. If you want to learn more about distributed messaging, take a look at this video next, where I show you how to implement distributed messaging in a microservices environment. Make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons under this video, and until next time, stay awesome.